Boy, it sure is bright out here. At nine thirty at night. In the in the sunny, surfy, surfy suns. Oh God, where are you gonna put us? <laughs> so it's been a while. It's been a while. Tales. Long time no see. I am sick, so if I sound weird of me. <laughs> if I sound weird, I'm sorry. We just we just saw a movie. We saw a movie and it was called Ride Parasite. Your Wait. No. Oh. Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh. What are we talking Star about? Star Wars The oh, Rise of Skywalker. No. No. That was it, right? No. What did we just see? Ride Your Wave? <laughs> All right, your wave. <laughs> so we just saw a movie called Ride Your Wave. And we haven't <laughs> talked about it at all. No. It's the newest uh, release from Masaki Yuasa, who we've covered a couple times on the channel. Look at all these thumbnails somewhere. somewhere. You're, you're going to chew your foot? While we're doing this? Yeah, I mean, that's, this is the best time to chew your feet. We have not discussed it. We literally just got back. Yeah, we just got back. Um, oh, shouts out. G Kids. Oh, Theatric, yeah. Theatrical division. Yeah. For getting us press passes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. That's first for us. And hopefully not a last. I don't know how well, this video is going to be. with this here, I, I, I mean... Well, are we talking about this or are we talking about this? This. This? This. This right here. That. Oh. Oh, this. Oh, wait. When we can make that this. Ride Your Wave. Spoiler free. Oh, yeah. No spoilers. No spo is a movie about a young woman mm -hmm. who is a surfer. Mm -hmm. It meets... Some other young men mm -hmm. who are firefighters through the movie, a budding relationship ensues. And it's kind of like a coming of age slash homecoming story because she's meeting these guys because she's moving back to the town where she was when she was a little kid. She grew up there for a little bit and then her dad's job, I think, made them move. And she wanted to come back because all she wanted to do was surf and be by the ocean. You actually got more than so I did, to be completely she, honest. Well, no, she talks about this. So she decided. I, I'm sure to she come did, back. but I'm also sick. <laughs> My capacity is like at maybe eighty percent. You know, you gotta say that sickness. What? Oh, kale, no. Oh, kale, no. What are your thoughts on um, ride your wave? I thought it was cute. Yeah. It was cute. Yeah. So there was a an interview. By the producer, I think. Mm -hmm. Kylie, Kylie is dying. Oh. And she was talking about how how Yuasa, he is a director who likes to be the director, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it kind of had like a, a George Lucas sort of thing about it. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I'll be honest, like, I liked the story, mm -hmm. but I could tell that, like, it was like one person. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. They were like more minor things. They weren't the overarching story. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I would happily watch this again. But overall, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And I had a good time. I, I liked it a lot as well. It was significantly more grounded than the two movies of his that we've covered on the channel. The Night nice Short Walk on Girl and Lou Over the Wall. Mm -hmm. I thought some of the parallels between this one and Lou Over the Wall were kind of interesting. They're both very beach themed. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously they're on the coast and there's like a certain amount of like magical realism with both of them. Yeah. Ne ne neither of those two, neither this nor Lou Over the Wall are as out there as the Night of the Short Walk on Girl, which yeah. is just completely <laughs> just out there. That's like a fever dream. It's pretty surreal. Which it kind of like, is a fever dream. Sort of. Like, to yeah. Care, so. Compared to Lou Over the Wall, it was much more like centralized. It was very localized is a better word. You never got the sense huh. that like a huge, huge amount of people were impacted by what was going on. But, I, but with Lou, I'm like, yeah, the cast was pretty small there too. Mm -hmm. But well, I do understand what you're saying, the impact. But no, overall, overall, I think it was really good. Um, yeah. Well, why don't we why don't we talk about yeah. a couple of the minor things? This is still spoiler free. It's going to be spoiler free yeah. th through the whole time. But like, I can be honest. Like, okay, this thing isn't even really a spoiler. Um, <clears throat> at one point, she's trying to take a picture, mm -hmm. and she's not using her phone, yeah. but she can't access the other phone so i was like wait How? like yeah i was like wait a <laughs> yeah, minute i don't know right. it was just kind of silly 
That is a huge she nitpick. A little inconsistency. Yeah, that yeah. was that's like a like major, major, major nitpick. Yeah. Like that is completely insignificant. Mm -hmm. Like you were talking about how the imagery is mm -hmm. very similar to Lou. Mm -hmm. I like felt that the whole way through. Which yeah. I mean, I feel like that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's the ocean, and yeah. Lou is about like kind of a mermaid, sort of. Sort of, yeah. I'm the kind of person who can like while watching a movie basically play by play, know how it's going to pan out. Oh, yeah, yeah. This one, it, like, broadcasted what was going to happen very loudly. was this not surprised at all by anything that happened. I think I brought a lot to this movie. Maybe I was projecting or my personal experience to what was actually there. And that it's really hard for me to separate myself from that. Mm -hmm. So... What you're saying is this movie made you cry, and you blame it for doing that, and you're upset with the movie. Ah, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, that's I, yeah, I, I that's how I felt. I really felt like this movie was about dealing with grief, overcoming that grief, mm -hmm. and and I felt like that's a subject that hits home for me. So of course I'm gonna forgive more the flaws than I would if it were something that I didn't have a connection with. So it's hard for me to like say with a critical eye. Oh, it's a good movie because I'm coming at it from a place where, well, it did affect me. That's fair, but I, I feel like you could say this is what I brought to it. If you bring similar things to it, you'll probably like it as well. I agree. Yeah. yeah. No, I definitely feel that way. If you haven't dealt with grief or if grief is not something that you feel a connection to, I can't say with certainty you will enjoy this movie. Lou Over the Wall is like a coming of age story exclusively. This is like a coming of age story that also deals with, it deals with finding your place in the world, but it also deals with overcoming grief, both visually and narratively. You see that it's not as like bombastic as Lou Over the Wall. It's not as like childlike. I disagree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually really disagree because where I never felt uncomfortable during Lou. I actually felt very uncomfortable during this movie. Again, that's what I'm, I, I think this is me. I think this is me coming in. I mm -hmm. think if I separate myself from that, what was going on in the movie, like basically the, the second act onward was very fantastical and very mm -hmm. goofy. I felt like that specifically mm -hmm. was very like ostentatious and bombastic in a different way than Lou was, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Oh god, you're wearing green. No, this. It's it's different enough. Okay. So what did you like? I mean, I feel like it goes without saying, because it sounds like he was working with a lot of the same people that he has been working with for a while. Mm -hmm. I feel like it goes without saying, but the animation. One thing that I noticed that I really, really liked in that regard was the number of, like, really dynamic shots. <laughs> So it would be showing things from multiple oh, perspectives. Oh yeah, that's so hard to do in exactly. animation. That's so hard to do. And usually, usually, if you see that, like in an animated movie, I feel like you see it like once or twice. Yeah, it, it happened like every five minutes in this movie. Yeah, no, I yeah, the animation of this was just like oh my gosh, yes. like I really like I it's like the flowiness. It's different from other anime. I really liked that in the theater, the guy who sat next to us, every time, because this is a movie that involves a lot of surfing, every time one of them would make the, the hand motions, he would just he do it. He kept doing it! And I was like, bless you. Bless, bless you, sweet that child. that man. Ah, oh, that was so much fun. He so, did kept checking his phone. Don't do that. Don't check your phone Don't in the check your phone in the theater. It's hard to talk about this without spoilers, but I, when the whole thing lit up, and then the part right after that, mm -hmm. when it's like, she's, that, that was, was like, oh, you went there. That was real. Like, because you did it. it you, you, you did it. And it, yeah. it was good. I yeah. feel like there are so many stories like this mm -hmm. that they don't give you that grit. Mm -hmm. They don't give mm -hmm. you that realism. And it's like, no, like, this sucks. Mm -hmm. It always sucks. No, no, not the movie. <laughs> what happens in the movie? I thought it was goofy. I honestly, I thought the whole movie, not the whole movie, but like once it started getting fantastical, mm -hmm. it was really goofy. Yeah. I would recommend it. Yeah. I, I was, was going to say, would you, would you recommend this movie? It's hard because it's like, because it was, it's, which I mean, it happens in any movie, but of course, but I feel like it's not enough 
mm-hmm. glue to like basically counterbalance the realistic aspect of it Mm -hmm. and there's almost too much lube for the realistic aspect yeah to not be too goofy for it to be completely like serious yeah Yeah. it's it's walking a very very narrow Mm -hmm. line Mm -hmm. and i do think it like goes like this Mm -hmm. as it's walking like it so i i don't think it's balanced but i don't care I don't think the tonal shifts were accidental. No, I agree. I I think that they were deliberate, and I think because they were deliberate, and because the people who were trying to execute them are so experienced, I think it was well pulled off. Yeah, yeah. No, I I enjoyed it. If you're looking for if you're looking for a movie that will like give you a good cry, uh, but then not make you feel terrible afterwards, this is a good good one for that. Yeah, it's It's, it's a good crying but also uplifting movie i guess this is one of those movies that's, that could be kind of a litmus test for the audience of what you get out of it yeah what did you get out of it tell us what you think <laughs> no that's what i'm saying mm-hmm. i come to it with my experience mm-hmm. and i think that that tints oh yeah absolutely the way i watch it absolutely like i said if you're a fan of yuasa or if you're looking for some anime that make you cry, make you laugh, all of the emotions, if you like magical realism. I mean... I really thought you were about to say, or if you lay eggs. <laughs> uh, if you lay eggs. So I don't know if you know this, but Eli and I have been taking Japanese classes oh, yeah. for yeah, yeah. not quite two years, almost two years. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like trying not to look at the subtitles. Mm-hmm. I do that on purpose. And there was this one part where the sub, the translation was not like a direct translation. What was said mm-hmm. was actually very funny. And so we both like yeah. burst out laughing yeah. in the theater and no one else was laughing. <laughs> it's like, oops. Yeah. So I will say if you like Japanese movies as much as we do, it does pay to learn Japanese. Not, it. not that we are fluent by any means, yeah. Oh, God, no. But. No. No. But yeah, uh, it's, there's, it's definitely, like, the more I learn, the more I feel my watching experience is immersive. And I feel like I'm getting so much more out of the movies. And, like, you know, through doing this channel, like, mm-hmm. we are learning a lot about the culture and like the history and uh, like how different symbols can mean different things and you can't replace growing up in an area you just you can't replace that but i think through learning the language we're learning a lot that we can have bring a deeper appreciation to what we're watching and i think if you're somebody who really enjoys like japanese culture watching japanese movies reading manga, you know, watching anime. I went from three to five, you know, you never know. I think it would behoove you to start learning Japanese. Yeah. If you've been thinking about it, do it. Cause we waited a lot longer than we should have. Yeah. If you're you know, able to afford it, go for it. If you're not, there are so many free apps that mm-hmm. you can at least start. Mm-hmm. It's turning into a PSA and I'm sorry, but I'm very passionate about this. If you have any desire to learn Japanese, just start. Mm-hmm. And if you need recommendations, hit us up on Twitter or something. Oh, yeah. You know, we yeah. can give you yeah, recommendations. Or in, or in the comments or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or in the comments. Okay. I think that's all I had to say. So yeah, overall, yeah. I'd say go see Ride Your Wave. <laughs> Go, ride your wave. Go ride your go wave. Go ride your wave. What if it's learning Japanese? If it's seeing this movie, if it's mainly go see this movie. If but, it's liking this video and subscribing to us on Cinemony Pong. Smash that subscribe <laughs> button. I thought you were gonna say that was like smooth, because I was pretty proud of that. No, that was really smooth. I mean, it was pretty good. Was you should probably like this video because that was pretty smooth. And also big thanks to Chester yeah. for being here. Yeah, and thanks again to uh, G Kids. Yes, thank you, G Kids. Thank releasing you so this, much for releasing this film and for getting us passes to it. This is a clap for G Kids. Go, G Kids!